This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. And this one is rather modern. We're talking like Ryzen 5 3600 circa, somewhere around there. We'll check it out uh, in more detail in a second. I do know that this graphics card is an RTX 2060. Asus Strix model, very nice. And the viewer suspects that this card is to blame for the computer not sending a picture out. Yeah, in 2021, that is, um, that's a big old youch. So a bit of backstory, this system was working just fine a few weeks ago. The owner bought a Wi-Fi card that connects directly into one of the PCI slots in the motherboard. Uh, he turned the system off, connected that card, powered it back on, everything was working just fine, except for the card itself. The Wi-Fi card apparently needed drivers or something, so he went to the manufacturer's website, decided that looked a little too sketchy, I think this was like a knockoff Wi-Fi card, and the website just, yeah, it just, it, didn't really sit right with him and look at your system. You're the probably the best judge of character there. If you think it looks too sketchy, that's fine. He towered the system back off and just removed the card. I think he was gonna return it uh, and he was gonna stick with the USB Wi-Fi dongle he was using previously. Well, after doing that, for powering the system off, pulling out that Wi-Fi card and then powering a system back on, suddenly no picture out. What's up with that? So he thinks it's possible that during this process, he bricked his graphics card. That, that would really suck. And I'm not even sure really how that could have happened if all you were doing was inserting and removing a Wi-Fi card. And if you were doing it correctly, look, this isn't rocket science, just make sure your system's off when you're swapping these things in and out. Um, it shouldn't really impact graphics card integrity at all. So we're gonna have to really dive into this one. The first thing I think I wanna do, and I don't usually do this, but I think what I wanna do right away is take this card out and put it into my system. If I can get picture out through this card in my rig, then we know it's not a graphics card problem. But of course, before that, we need to plug the system in and see if we can replicate the symptom he's describing here. Um, this one's gonna be interesting, and I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna have a fix for him if it ends up being the graphics card because I don't have too many of those. Manufacturers don't like sending cards to YouTubers who refuse to make reviews of their cards. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm not making videos like that if the card in question isn't being sold at MSRP pretty much anywhere, or it's not even being sold at all, it's out of stock at launch, which makes no sense. Why would you launch a card that's not even in stock at launch? Um, they just don't like sending cards for, for, for that. And I, I understand, right? I mean, it's their choice. At the end of the day, they can choose who they wanna send review kits to, but um, they want reviews and I refuse to make reviews of cards nobody can buy. So that's my stance, and as a result, I don't have many cards, like at all. But uh, we might be able to make an exception here if it ends up uh, you know, being that this card is bricked. So we'll see, we need to investigate, stay with me. Signal RGB. It's a free one-stop RGB software suite packed with support for hundreds of the best RGB devices from leading brands. Say you have a Corsair memory kit and a Gigabyte motherboard, but you don't want to control both with separate programs. Just let Signal RGB work its magic. Synchronize anything from keyboards to PC fans, regardless of the manufacturer. You can even customize lighting effects with various games to set the mood without hassle. There are also plenty of uploaded themes so you can kind of play around a bit. Signal RGB support list for products is growing every single day and you can get started for free by clicking that link below. For those who are new to the Fix or Flop playlist, what we do here is attempt to fix viewer systems in and around the Orlando, Florida area for free. We don't charge any of these viewers anything to at least take a look at their systems and see what is wrong. When it comes to hardware, it's pretty much black and white. Nothing I do here is very difficult. It, there's something special about it. You don't need a college degree. Heck, you don't need a high school diploma. I know kids who can do the exact same thing I'm doing in this playlist. So there's nothing special about me or the situation that I'm in, apart from the fact that I can take videos like these, monetize them, put pre-rolls in them, product placements, YouTube AdSense, all of that. That's how I make my money here, which is why I don't offload any of that cost to the viewer. It just feels wrong to charge a viewer when he or she's already being gracious enough to loan me the system with which I'll make the video. I only ask two things of viewers who loan their systems. The first is that they be patient because sometimes this takes five or six days. I have to wait for parts to get here if I don't have them on hand. And uh, yeah, there's nothing really I can do there. I have to wait for shipping. The other thing I ask is that they don't set their expectations too high. I don't make any promises about upgrading hardware, although we have done that in the past. I also don't make any promises is about actually being able to fix the system at hand, hence why the playlist is called Fix or Flop. Most of the time, if it's hardware related, we can narrow it down and get it fixed. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna make any any promises. I've, I've seen a lot and there's a lot that could go wrong. At this point, we've had dozens of viewer PCs make their way into the studio, whether it be for the Fix or Flop series or the PCDC series. 
And I can't say I've seen too many that look cleaner than this. Cable management has been taken care of. The, the hardware is actually very complimentary. The graphics card and the CPU, as far as I'm aware, those are very balanced. You can tell the viewer really knew what he was doing when he was assembling this. And judging from the age of the hardware, I'd say the system is no older than maybe one to two years. That said, this build is virtually useless, one giant paperweight without a picture out. And that's what we're gonna attempt to diagnose here. Uh, we're gonna plug this into my portable monitor first, attempt to replicate the issue described by the viewer. And if we do in fact get no picture out from the graphics card, I think the first thing I'm gonna do in this case is swap this graphics card out with my personal graphics card. I'm gonna actually see if this card runs in my, in my own rig. And if it does, then we've ruled out one of the potentially more catastrophic hardware failures in this build. Again, nobody wants to hear that the graphics card has died in 2021. It's like, talk about bad timing. Now, as I've said before, it is always important to test drive the build. When a viewer describes something going wrong, you need to make sure that what you see in person is the same thing they're describing. If that is not the case, then it's possible something else might've happened either in shipping or transport, and you don't wanna deal with that can of worms, especially as a business. So I'm gonna connect power here, and we're gonna flip the switch at the rear. And let's see, let's see what we get. Everything, everything sounds fine. Everything looks fine. But we're not getting picture out. I saw that the graphics card fans were spinning. They're not spinning now, that, that they have the zero, zero RPM function, that's perfectly normal. LEDs are all lit up, fans are all spinning elsewhere in the build. But yeah, we're not getting a picture. This, uh, this could be pretty bad. A few moments later. Ha, huh, who would have thought? Look at that, we have a post, and I know you didn't see what just happened between clips, because it, it, it literally took seconds to do, and I was just gonna run through this as a precautionary measure, I cleared the CMOS. That's literally all I did. I just cleared the CMOS. There's no dedicated clear CMOS button on this motherboard. This is an X570 board, but you have to jump the two pins, uh, JBAT1, JBAT1, for those interested. But uh, this here is a post, and all we needed to do to get the system to post was clear that CMOS. There's actually a debug LED little section at the top right of this board. And I noticed as we were power cycling, there was no LED lit up at all for anything. The CPU, the RAM, VGA, none of that was lit up. The system looked like it was booting, looked like it was trying to post. We just had no picture out. The LEDs on the graphics card, especially the one above the eight pin uh, supplemental PCI power connector, that was lit up. That tells me that the card's receiving power appropriately. The fans were spinning. Everything told me that this build should be working. And I noticed that right off the bat, the only issue was we weren't getting a picture out. I was maybe concerned that it might've been like an HDMI port issue. That's very rare, but still, you know, if you're connecting and disconnecting cables all the time, I'm sure you could probably screw something up in the long run if you're not careful. But uh, yeah, clear the CMOS, there you go. You know, I get some hate in the comments section every now, every now and then, it's not bad. There's just a few people every now and then who, complain about my troubleshooting process. Why are you bothering to clear the CMOS? You should have jumped straight to the power supply. You should have known that was a power supply issue. Relax, my friends. This is just a, I just run through this just as a quick little checklist because it takes literally seconds. You're trading seconds for peace of mind because you never know. It might come down to just something as simple as clearing the CMOS, folks. That, 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 that could be it. I've, I've seen it happen so many times, and not just in this case here, where you're not getting picture out. Sometimes the build will just flicker on and off. And you'll think, okay, well, that's probably a power supply issue. Why are you not just going straight to the power supply? Why are you checking RAM? Why are you clearing the CMOS? Because they take seconds to do. And you wanna rule out those simple fixes first, because you're gonna really shoot yourself in the foot if you run through a bunch of different hardware swaps only to find out that clearing the CMOS was all you needed to do to remedy the issue. Now at this point, mission accomplished, right? We got a post, we fixed the issue. That's the point of the fixer flop playlist. We could just give this back to the viewer and, and call it a day. But I wanna take just a few more minutes to further investigate what exactly was causing the no picture issue. I have a feeling that if it's happened to this viewer, it could happen to some of you. So I've got my own Wi-Fi card here. We're gonna connect this to this viewer's build and attempt to replicate the no picture issue we saw earlier in this video. I have a good feeling that since all we did essentially by resetting the CMOS was reset BIOS settings, 
There was some setting enabled in the BIOS by default when he connected his Wi-Fi card, and when he removed it, that setting remained the same, and that possibly prevented his card from functioning the way that it should. Not that running on something like eight lanes would prevent picture out. You could run a 2060 on eight lanes, no problem. But maybe there was some setting that was turned on when this was connected. I'm gonna see if we can notice a difference here in the BIOS. We're gonna check first, uh, since everything's vanilla, and kind of run through, make sure it's all good to go. It should all be set to auto, more or less. And then we'll connect this and see if anything in the BIOS changed. Now, admittedly, this Wi-Fi card here is not a sketchy one. This is a TP-Link card, and these are actually very good. I use these all the time for my builds. Just want to connect to the internet very quickly, not deal with uh, Ethernet drivers or anything like that. Usually this is plug and play. But the point should still get across no problem. If we connect this, I imagine it'll do the same thing to the board that his sketchier Wi-Fi card did. So this here is the BIOS. Again, we're gonna run through and just make sure that things are all vanilla. We'll check settings. I'm assuming all this is gonna be set to auto. Let's see, Let's see PCI subsystems, PCI LAN configuration, X16, auto, auto, auto. Uh, we can check the overclock tab here. Let's see. So everything is set to auto. So with that confirmed, all I'm gonna do now is power the system back off and connect this Wi-Fi card. And I'm not sure which PCIe slot he connected this to. We'll try a few of them. Um, I think I'm gonna start with the second lowest uh, smaller, uh, probably it's like a four lane slot. We'll see if that does the trick. I looked up this motherboard's manual online and confirmed that every PCIe slot with the exception of the very top 16 lane slot is controlled by the PCH. So when he inserted his Wi-Fi card into one of these more than likely, that might have changed one of the default configurations with this 16 lane slot up top. And this is the slot where his graphics card is connected. So we're gonna try the second lowest single lane slot. We're gonna connect our Wi-Fi card, route the antennae through. And it's literally as simple as that right there. We won't bother screwing it in. We're gonna remove it in a second anyway. And back in the BIOS again, you can see PCIe subsystem settings have not changed. We're still at 16 lanes with that uppermost uh, full length PCIe slot. Uh, these other two are set to auto. These control the PCIe generation. This is an X570 board, so it does support Gen 4. Uh, and even though our RTX 2060 can't take advantage necessarily of the additional bandwidth, uh, the CPU and the motherboard both support it. So that's why uh, when we check on this other page, you can see that the slot, which is populated with our card, is default set to Gen 4. Uh, so that's confirmed full 16 lanes. We can also swing our mouse a bit over here to the left, which is actually further down the motherboard. And you can see that it says unknown vendor, other network controller running at one X or X1, but it's just a single lane there. Uh, so this is our network card. It is detected, it is functioning. Now let's power off and remove the Wi-Fi card. And that's the result we weren't looking for, despite this being the end goal. So let's try a few more things. Well, I've tried pretty much everything I can think of to screw this up and I can't. The system continues to post, which is a good thing now, at least clearing the CMOS fixed that. But um, I, can't, I can't seem to figure out what exactly this viewer did. It may have just come down to the type of Wi-Fi card he had. And if it was a very sketchy one, maybe it was unbranded or something similar to that, uh, then that could have been the issue. Although that's very, that's very strange. I've never run into that uh, before. There are a few other things that I have noted though that I think you should know about as well, just in case you're wondering why things work the way they do. So I've never run into this issue before with any other motherboard I've ever worked with that I can think of. If you click the delete key at just the right time when trying to get into your BIOS, right, as the system is attempting to post, you'll just end up with a black screen. An example here, see it's all connected, plugged right into the uh, HDMI port at the back of the 2060 here. We got nothing. This looks awfully similar to what we started with, right? And it's just because I happened to time the pressing of the delete key improperly. That should never happen. Another slightly more obvious case for a black screen is in the event that you're in your BIOS and for whatever reason, you decide to switch display ports, not just display port like DP, but also HDMI could be anything. Uh, we were in one HDMI port and now we're in the other and you can see we now have a black screen. No signal. That's weird, isn't it? But it's because I, I believe the graphics card drivers haven't kicked in yet. So it's not like you could run multi displays, right? You're only getting one display out in a post screen in your BIOS uh, because the drivers haven't initialized for this graphics card. And if you switch that connection to another, you know, another display out connector like HDMI or if you switch to DisplayPort or whatever, without restarting the system, if all you're trying to do is get into your BIOS, you get a black screen like this. So that's um, that's another one, just in case you weren't aware. Funny thing is, if you remove that connection and slide the cable back into the original HDMI port, you can see we have a picture again. 
so that's kind of cool. And to further drive this point home, once Windows has been loaded into through the boot drive, you can see that when we switch HDMI ports now, we should still get a picture. And see, that's because the graphics drivers have already initialized. The system hasn't loaded graphics drivers when it's just in the BIOS because it hasn't booted into uh, the boot drive that has those files in it. So that's why this works here and it doesn't work in the BIOS. But all that said, you really shouldn't have a system adding a Wi-Fi card like this one to a build, especially if your, your motherboard doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi. One of these can come in very handy uh, if you don't have access to a uh, hardwired ethernet connection. Uh, so don't be afraid of using one of these, especially from a name brand like TP-Link. Uh, there are plenty of Asus ones and others that are also really good. But uh, yeah, don't let this single event here scare you away from these. These are actually a really good solution if you need wireless connectivity. So this is about the point where I would start talking about the long and arduous process we had to go through to get the system working again, when in reality, all you had to do was clear your CMOS. Now, it wasn't as easy as just clicking a button with this particular board. You do have to physically jump two pins. That requires some piece of metal. I would recommend using just your uh, Phillips head screwdriver if you have one. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was very, very minimal effort. And I'm not gonna try to like sugarcoat it and make it seem like I did more than I did in this video. It literally took five seconds. And for those who, again, keep saying, why are you clearing your CMOS? It's obviously this, it's obviously that. Please, if you see a comment like that in the future, just link them this video, okay? Just the proof is in the pudding. Sometimes it is as simple as clearing your CMOS. If you are not getting a picture out and you were five seconds earlier, the first thing you should do in 99% of cases is clear your CMOS. It takes two seconds and it just removes that doubt from your mind that it could be something that simple because you're really gonna be banging your head against the wall once you find out after swapping tons of hardware that all you had to do was hold a Phillips head screwdriver against two pins for about 10 or 15 seconds. Small right aside, I'm really glad we didn't have to swap anything out in this build. The graphics card appears to be in really good shape. In fact, the entire build for that matter, it looks to be in great shape. At this point, I would usually uh, start focusing on cable managing. I, I try to clean these builds up a bit before I return them to their uh, rightful owners. But this build is is pretty much already good to go. I mean, there's uh, you know a few questionable choices, but all in all, I mean, he did a really good job with the build, and I, I don't see any immediate uh, needs here. Uh, so yeah, I just sent the viewer uh, an email telling him that uh, good news: his graphics card is not dead; his system is actually fully functional and uh, he'll be able to pick it up in a few days. Now, if you enjoy this video, despite it not being anywhere near as long as some of our other fix of flaw videos, and that's because this only took like 10 seconds to fix, and look, it's all out there. I'm not trying to hide anything or act like it's more intense than it needs to be. Sometimes the solution is as simple as clearing your CMOS. I would appreciate you clicking that thumbs up button. That goes a long way. Thank you very much for that support. Also, just watching this far into the video really does help. And if you are not subscribed, what the heck are you doing? Get subscribed, I'll give you a few seconds. How you doing? You subscribed yet? And I'll catch you in the next one. By the way, I'm looking at buying a van. Yeah, that's a thing. I'm looking at buying a work van that I can use to travel around the country, fixing viewer systems for free. I think that would be a really cool like fixer flop on tour style series. We'll probably just incorporate it into this playlist here. It'll just be season two or whatever, but with a different premise, obviously we're going to you. We're driving to your area uh, so that we can fix your systems in our van. I don't know how well or how not well that's gonna go, but um, worth a shot. And I think you guys will enjoy it either way. Um, my, my only real issue is just trying to source enough components or like I'll have to pack a lot of components just in case things need to be swapped out, et cetera. And when I'm on the road for weeks at a time, I'm gonna have to get extra parts sent to me in my van, which is not stationary. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work either. Might have to reach out to some friends in the area I happen to be in at the time to see if I can get a hold of those components. Um, and then otherwise I'm gonna have to just stuff the van with a bunch of stuff that I might need when I'm troubleshooting, swapping things out, replacing things and the like. I don't know how that's gonna go. I'm still working it out, but I am in early talks I'm looking at some vans and um, I'm gonna need a van that's big enough to have like a desk in it and um, we'll be able to mount some smaller cameras and things. I'd like to be able to sleep in it too. That'd be pretty cool. I wouldn't have to buy, you know, hotel rooms everywhere I go. Who knows? Anyway, it's just, just the thought for now. We're trying to work out some numbers, seeing if it's viable. I think it will be. At the end of the day, it's a flop. And I guess that fits with the playlist as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for troubleshooting with me.